Edinburgh is a city of memory. Everywhere you look, you see monuments to the great luminaries of Scotland and Britain. From Robert Burns to James Clark Maxwell, from David Hume to Admiral Nelson, from Dougald Stewart to John Playfair, to Sir Walter Scott, the monument here being the largest in the world dedicated to a writer. Even the loyal Greyfriars Bobby has not been forgotten. The city is so full of monuments, and that, along with the style of the national monument seen here, has caused Edinburgh to be called the Athens of the North. But in a biography I read before traveling to Edinburgh, I came across the statement that a monument of significance is missing. Despite prominent Scottish philosopher David Hume having said that Napier was more justly due the title of great man than any other person the country had produced, we find no large monument to Napier in these public spaces. Because of this, I decided to look high and low for anything honoring John Napier. I've always had a sense of my mathematical tra travels as treasure hunts, which makes for a lot of fun. At the National Portrait Gallery, I saw that Napier takes his place along the processional frieze. In this parade of history, he is right there with reformer John Knox, Mary Queen of Scots, and the tragic David Rizzio. The National Portrait Gallery does own a portrait of Napier, but it was not on display when I visited. A portrait of his daughter-in-law, Margaret Graham, was on display, however. On the outside of the building, Napier is honored with a relief on the northeast corner. I've found that it helps to look for his coat of arms, which is what jumped out at me here and told me that this was Napier. Less than a mile away is the National Museum of Scotland. Just off its grand gallery is a hall of Scottish inventors and scientists. John Napier is pictured here, and there's a display including a rooster along with Napier's rods, one of his calculating devices. About a mile and a half southwest of the town center is Merkiston Castle, where Napier was born. It's now the centerpiece of Edinburgh Napier University. Inside is a display containing the family crest, family history, a bit of John's writing, and again, a rooster and Napier's rods. If you turn around and look across the hall, you'll see an abstract representation of Napier's rods, that are part of a bust of Napier sculpted by Valentin Zanoba. I find this bust very intriguing, seeming to capture many moods in Napier, depending on the angle or the lighting, and I love that he's portrayed with the calculating rods that he invented. Leaving Merkiston Castle and heading back towards the center of town, we can find St. Cuthbert's Kirk, which was Napier's parish church. He served here as elder, and this is where he's buried. With 400 years worth of renovations, the exact location of his grave is not known, but there's a memorial plaque in his honor. There's a lot of detail to be noted here, including a ribbon at the top with his personal motto, in prudentia et simplicitate, along with his symbols of the serpent and the dove, and again, the family crest seen on either side here. I have not come across any other memorial specifically honoring John Napier, but there are other treasures to be found that relate to close family members, so I'm going to include those as well in this video. Despite this plaque, there is some disagreement about this being his burial place. Some sources listed it as St. Giles Cathedral, but the reading I've done has convinced me that St. Cuthbert's is the location of his burial. Notice as we approach St. Giles that we see more monuments in this great city. The one on the left is of David Hume, and the one nearer the cathedral is of a prominent Scottish politician of the 1800s.
One reason St. Giles is thought by some to be John Napier's burial location is the inscription on the north exterior wall that the Napier family sepulchre is located here. As we enter the church and look back to the west, we see the beautiful blue ceiling. At the eastern end, just to the right of the east window, is a pillar containing the Napier family coat of arms. This honors a generous donation to the embellishment of the church by Alexander Napier, one of John's ancestors who lived about a hundred years before John was born. Alexander is the one with hair flowing to the side like wings. This decoration was placed here in about 1460. Nearby, on the south of the church, is a side chapel dedicated to the Marquis of Montrose, a signer of the covenant and a royalist. John Napier's son and grandson, both named Archibald, fought by the side of Montrose and are honored in the top right corner of the stained glass window in this side chapel. Again, you see the coat of arms. As long as we're at St. Giles, we may as well go just a bit further east on the Royal Mile and take a quick peek in Borthwick's Close. Because the Napiers were very prominent in the politics of the day, the family did have a home here in the town center. Again, much change has taken place in 400 years, but if we're seeking out all the Napier connections, we may as well pop into this close. Further out, about four miles northwest of the town center, is Lauriston Castle, which was owned at one point by John Napier's half-brother, Alexander. I can't post pictures of Lauriston without thinking of my awesome Tours by Locals guide, Toby. Super awesome. I love this guy. Much has been added to the castle over the years. Originally, it would have consisted only of a tower house similar to Merkiston Castle. If you look closely at this oldest part of the castle, you'll see a horoscope embedded in the wall. This is Alexander's horoscope, and it's thought to have been drawn up by John. Given how worn it is, it's hard to read. Best I can tell, it says here, Sir Alexander Napier, son to Sir Archibald of Merkiston. Archibald being the father of both John and Alexander. The castle is open for tours on rare occasion. Very rare. Having attempted it three times over the course of six years, I've never found it open, but I hear they do sometimes have tours. Good luck. But the grounds alone, which are extensive, are worth a trip. There are a variety of gardens, and there's a beautiful view of the Firth of Forth across a long sweep of lawn. So while there are no huge monuments to John Napier in Edinburgh, there are certainly many smaller memorials to Napier and connections to Napier to be found in this beautiful country, in this city of memory.